Um, it's really important, the close reading strategy, because it teaches you how to pull really important information from text. Today we're looking at poetry specifically because that's what we've been learning and that's what will be on your benchmark. However, it really applies to any sort of text, so it's really, really critical to nail this. Um, so basically, when you're reading, you would give it three reads, okay, or close reads. The first time you read it, you're just pulling basic information from the poem or the text, okay? So it's really key ideas and details. So the basic meaning, maybe you define words that you're unfamiliar with, maybe you have to use a dictionary, or maybe you can just use context clues. Uh, you make inferences. You determine who the speaker is, you look at their word choice, maybe try to figure out why, as a next step, an author chose to use those particular words. All right, so the second time you read something, you really want to start pulling some information from the poem or the text um, that goes beyond that basic uh, level reading. So you want to consider the structure and form of the poem or text. Uh, techniques that add meaning or emotion to the poem. So techniques maybe like figurative language, sound devices, those sorts of things. Uh, figurative language right here. Repeated images or clues to a deeper meaning. So oftentimes when a poet especially repeats something throughout the poem, usually that's something that's really important to the poem's message or theme. What is the title? The title? The title is really important, especially when you first um, get it, give it a quick read, you look at the title first, right? Mm -hmm. And that, in this case, in this poem, you'll see it gives a lot of clues to what it's about. Uh, sound devices, figurative language, and the structure, and how the structure of the poem relates directly to its meaning. Then the third read, that's when we're really absorbing all of the information that we took from the poem in the first and second stage of reading. And we maybe figure out some hidden meanings within the poem, also relate the poem to other works that we've read, and also determine maybe why this poem is important, right? Why it matters, why are we reading this poem? What can we learn from it, okay? So what I want you to do first, is to silently right now just read through this poem, okay? Because what I want you to do is practice, Joanna, one second, is practice this first what is word, the, okay? the basic so, meaning of this poem. Someone raise their hand. The basic <laughs> meaning. Yeah. It's about like the shadows of the ships. <laughs> of the ships or where? Like the, what the shadow looks like. Of the ships where? Of the ships on the lawn. Yeah. Oh yeah, from the poem. One tip. 
Okay, so one example of personification, you can find one in the poem. One hyperbole and one metaphor. And I will tell you, this metaphor is a little challenging. No, it's not. I found one. I'll take you right here. So you know, I can find it. I guess about it. Because you can't see it. That is an example of something that's okay. So it's just a long, long bar. Yeah. Right, so finish those last four questions. 